Hey everybody, so it's Tuesday morning. Getting the second group of cows over right now to milk. Here in the summer, the cows move a little bit slower. Try to be patient. I know they don't like the heat. Doesn't feel too bad this morning, but it's pretty humid out here still. Come on. We've been running these soakers in the parlor. We got them on both sides now. So once the milkers are on, we'll start it up. We got finished with the milking, cleaned everything up. Now I'm here at the special needs pen. There's a couple that I want to give some pills to. The hoof trimmer actually just pulled in as well. He's going to be trimming some cows today. Looking for number 23 here. Now she's down on the end, not in the headlock. She had some metritis this week. She's getting better, but I wanted to give her some more aspirin. This man passes on the end are nice, except when you want to catch a cow and she's eating through there, you can't get her. Let's see if we can get this one to get caught. Come on, girl. Come on. So this cow, she had metritis. It's an infection in the uterus. She had a hard calving, and there was just a lot of swelling, and she ended up getting an infection. We saw she was running a fever on the Smax Tech bolus the other day, so we were giving her an antibiotic, uh, but also aspirin to help with uh, the fever and the pain. She's doing better now. I think she's on the way up, but I did notice she still has a little bit of a temperature this morning. Let's see if we can get her caught. We use this regular aspirin a good bit. This is pretty cheap stuff. Also been kind of trying out this product from this company. It's supposed to be more effective. Lasts a little bit longer than regular aspirin. Really not promoting this company at this point, but I think we see some promise with some of these pills helping these cows. It's nice with the Smack Stack boluses. Now we're able to monitor and see if we see a difference between these pills and the aspirin. I'm gonna keep an eye on her today. She was up trying to eat, but not real aggressively, so I'm not sure how good she's feeling right now. Let the cows eat a little bit, chase them back. My dad's gonna spread a little bit of shavings up here, and then we'll get that trimming chute set up. All right, now we're sorting out cows. Hey, 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 we got a trim, girl. We got guys working on the roof again today. Try not to disrupt all the cows if we can help it. We sorted out a bunch of cows for him, so he's gonna start bringing them through here, checking their feet. We 
last three or four cows that we wanted to check that were a little sore this month. So actually not too bad for this month in the summer. A lot of those cows out there then are just maintenance trims. We got about 15, 17 cows to trim today. But I'm gonna get some breakfast now. We sorted out a few more cows for them. We got a high temp alert with the Smax Tech Bolus on this 561 this morning. She's right in the middle of her dry period. She really shouldn't have any issues right now. If she picked up a case of mastitis or something down here, it could be possible. So we're gonna chase her up and check her milk. She still has a fever. There's no swelling at all in the udder. Not really thinking it's mastitis. It's interesting that we're able to monitor the dry cows. Normally we're not looking too close at these every day. Just gonna give her some aspirin and keep an eye on her for now. We're learning as we go with these pills. He's just listening to her lungs to hear if you can hear anything like pneumonia. Everything seems fine for now, so we're just gonna watch her. The trimmer's working at those last cows. We're gonna have to help him clean up then. But we're gonna start working in the bigger harvest store silo there. Blue one on the right. Got a bucket of tools. We're gonna make third cutting alfalfa next week. We can't fit it in the stave that we put second cutting in. It's full. Gotta go in one of the blue silos now. They're both empty, but the unloaders are both long armed, so we have to shorten one of the arms up so we can fill again. We have the two concrete stave silos on the end, those unload off the top. And then the two harvest store silos, these are glass lined steel silos. They're sealed. It's a little different animal. Got the top open up there, got fresh air, and we actually cleaned out a little bit of junk feed that was in here yesterday. These unload off the bottom, and these unloaders, you can see that chain reaches the whole way out to the edge right now when you first fill it if you have it long armed like this it'll struggle to get around you need to have it shortened by a couple feet for it to get started right it's kind of a trade-off both types of silos have their inconvenient parts this one's nice because when you go to fill on top the unloader's not in the way you can just add feed whenever you want those we have to lift the unloader up every time we want to put new feed in it we're not a huge fan of these silos. They just end up costing a lot to maintain. These unloaders are extremely expensive to maintain. I think we'll put third, fourth, fifth cutting in this silo now. Could have put triticale in here in the spring, although we have to make sure we get it dry enough for these silos or it doesn't work out very well. Trying to figure out the best strategy to get inside this silo. First thing we have to do is loosen the tension on this chain so we can take it apart. And then we're gonna remove this section of the arm here, it's just about a foot and a half. We should have Andrew here to help us today. Yeah, Andrew helped me out with this last time we did this. Andrew, where are you? There's a big spring in this arm. We're just loosening the tension on that spring. Gotta use a punch to turn it. Had to take a break in the silo to clean up here after the trimmer. Just gonna get this clean sawdust out of here into the pen and then a little bit of this messy stuff we scoop away. It's just nice if you're bringing a bunch of cattle over somewhere they're not used to going like this. Give them some traction and padding there so they're not slipping and falling and hurting themselves. All right, we're back in the silo here. We're gonna take five links out of this chain.
Get that pin in the cutter key. Now we're just tighten everything back up. A little cappy takeoff here at the end to grease this one fitting. Okay, this silo is ready to fill. It doesn't seem like a big difference just shortening it that much, but it makes it a whole lot easier that first couple times around the silo with all that packed feed there. These silos are not meant to have all the weight of the feed on the unloader all the time. Uh, it's supposed to create a cavity underneath. Uh, when it unloads pretty fast, then once you get that cavity built and the feed just kind of falls down loosely, then you short arm it, create that little dome in there, and then long arm it, and it's supposed to keep that dome the whole way through. This silo is ready to fill now, and once we start pulling and feeding, we're going to make sure we run the unloader every load until it creates a little bit of space there for that chain to move. If you go put a bunch of feed in on top of that, all that weight will just all get down. It won't be able to start then. It'll need to be long armed then, but to do that, you got to pull the unloader out. You obviously can't get inside once there's feed in there. We're going to go bed the calves up. We got a new load of sawdust here today. Well, they sent us some fluffier, not as nice looking stuff this time. We're gonna bed this barn at our rented farm where the pregnant heifers stay. Trying to keep this cleaner. These animals like to go inside during the summer here, even though they have pasture. It can get pretty sloppy in here pretty fast. Try to make it a priority to bed it up twice a week. It'd be nice if we could tunnel ventilate this barn a little bit, but don't really have a lot of openings at this end to put fans. I'd love to put a ceiling fan in, but we don't have the height for that. We'd also like to put a scoop of bedding in the heifer barn at home here. I'm gonna go through, push the feed in, and then they'll all come up and eat. I can close the gates. They usually give us that really fine sawdust. It's really absorbent. This is more of a lighter weight, fluffy stuff. Just a byproduct they get out of factories and for whatever reason, they don't have the stuff we normally get. I think the bedding we normally use is sawdust out of the Ashley Furniture Factory. There's a company that deals this stuff and we're always asking for that more fine, heavy stuff. Just have to make sure we're putting enough in if we're using this other stuff. Ends up costing a bit more money. With this slatted scrape alley, it just really keeps the slop out of here. If you remember our old heifer barn, we could not keep it dry. As soon as you clean it out, it would just get sloppy within half a day it seemed like we're just spoiled now with this nice slatted floor and bigger barn like this it's really good to see on a hot day all the dry cows laying down spread out like this we have trouble with this barn specifically they like to bunch up in that area for whatever reason when it gets hot and that's the worst thing for them to do i really like when they spread out and lay down like this i am seeing an issue though that fan back there is not running they normally like to lay in the middle and the back of the barn but right now they're not laying here because that fan's off I guess the starter on the motor don't work right. It 
not able to quite get itself going. I think we need to pull that motor off and get it looked at. We don't need all the stalls in here because this barn's only about half full. Still like to have a option for them to lay in the back too. All right guys, I'm just wrapping up my day, working on my computer a little bit, editing a video, working on fixing this water leak the other day. Just finished my fifth soda. No, just kidding. I need to get rid of those. See you guys in the next one.